Hello, my name is Andy Heemstra. I am the Assistant Director of Operations at Northern Jet Management here in the Grand Rapids Airport. My role is leading our team of pilots to operate our aircraft safely and efficiently to meet our customers' needs. An example of my work has to do with flight planning, paying particular attention to how the weather might influence our flight. We fly often to the Chicago area, and I want to talk to you today about how the weather can influence a flight from Grand Rapids to Chicago, Pelwaukee Executive Airport, which is just north of the Chicago O'Hare Airport that most of the major airlines use. What we have here is what we call an approach plate, and it looks complicated, but I've highlighted the pertinent areas that I'd like to talk to you guys about. This is the path, the airport's down here, and this is the path that we're going to fly using our aircraft instruments to come down through the clouds and land on the piece of pavement. One important piece of information that we need to get from this chart is this 301. What this tells us is that we can use this instrument landing system to fly our aircraft down to 300 feet above the ground as long as the visibility reported at the aircraft is one mile or more. If the, if the clouds are lower or the visibility is less, we will not be able to see the airport and maneuver our airplane safely to land on the runway at this airport. Oftentimes, the Chicago area can become uh, saturated with fog. And so for the sake of this example, if we assume that the cloud layer is at 200 feet and visibility one half of a mile, that makes this previous approach that we were talking about unusable to us because we won't be able to see the runway when we get to the end of it. So now we have an issue. Our customers wanted to go to Chicago Pilwaukee Airport, but due to the weather, we cannot land at that airport. One solution that we could offer them is to look at the Chicago O'Hare Airport, which is just south of the Chicago Executive Airport. This is a very similar uh, page that we just looked at, but instead this is a Chicago O'Hare Airport. Same picture up here, and again on this sheet we'll pay attention to these numbers, 200 and one half. The instrument landing facilities at the Chicago O'Hare Airport are slightly better than the ones at the Chicago Executive Airport. Therefore, we can fly our airplane lower and get beneath these clouds, see the runway, and land on it safely. So we've got a couple different options to get our passengers from Grand Rapids to Chicago. We can wait for the weather to improve or we can divert now to Chicago O'Hare and work on some ground transportation to get them from the O'Hare Airport to wherever it was in Chicago that they want to go. A third option is that we could take off right now and fly around in circles around the Chicago Executive Airport and as soon as that fog starts to lift uh, we can go right into the Chicago Executive Airport. Can you think of any other options? And what would you do? Were you able to think of other options? If somebody said to take a car, we could still get our passengers over to Chicago before the car gets there. Not a bad thought, though. Since both of these, or all of these options are acceptable to us, what we would do is to offer these solutions to our customers and see which decision best meets their needs. Keeping in mind that due to the proximity of the Chicago area, right here in the yellow, to the lake, we can expect that uh, as the sun comes up and the wind increases a little bit, that the localized fog, which we generally uh, see in this area, we would expect to dissipate. More often than not, I think we would see our passengers uh, sit here in Grand Rapids for an extra hour or so while that happens before we uh, take off to the Chicago Executive Airport, their original destination. 